All right. So, welcome to the Peace and Mohair Grease podcast. This is episode number five, where we're going, where we're going to be discussing uh, the free Britney movement. Um, basically, uh, we're talking about the um, the uh, documentary that was entitled "Framing Britney Spears," and we're just going to jump right into it. Um, I had been reacting to Britney Spears songs. You know, I was. Uh, doing some reactions just kind of going back and doing like similar to what i was doing with the backstreet boys and because back in the 90s i really you know just listened to the regular songs that came on the popular ones but i never got to dig deep into their albums and likewise um britney the same way so i wanted to just do some different things that's all um one of the things is uh I like to be different when I'm doing different reactions. So I like to do all kind of different, uh, listen to different music and genres and all that type of stuff. I've been expanding my palette. Um, however, uh, someone in the comment asked me to take a look at the documentary, um, just to, to understand what's going on more with this, uh, you know, the free Britney, Britney movement and what's really been going on. Cause I didn't really know. I've heard a little, you know, little blurps here and there, uh, back and forth, doing things, uh, reading little articles here and there, looking on Twitter, stuff like that. But I didn't really delve into the whole thing. So, um, so I watched it, and uh, it was a it was a pretty good documentary. Um, it touched a lot of the surface type things, I would say, um, but. Uh, you know, um, I mean, it was okay. Uh, as far as the quality of it, I mean, it was a good quality. Let me take that back. It was a good quality. It was, it reminded me of like an MTV doc documentary. That's what it gave me. So, you know, I wanted it to go a little deeper since it was on, I believe, NBC, some one of those things, but you know, you can only do so much when it's on, you know, mainstream when it's not really made behind the scenes but you know looking at it you know they had the typical you know uh child star growth um i mean you know she grew up in a wholesome wholesome home uh you know uh where everything was hold on just a second this is crazy yeah okay just trying to get the vibe right here Okay, so basically she grew up in a, you know, pretty decent home, as I should say, um, where they was talking about it. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like her upbringing or something was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, so I did, uh, you know, enjoy seeing that part, kind of how she grew up, you know, she was singing on, what was it, Star Search and, you know, stuff like that. You know, she was just a, you know, a normal little kid, a talented little kid that, you know, just like any other kid that just likes to do or any other talented kid. And, you know, she had, looked like she had, a, appeared to have a great set of, you know, parents and a great upbringing. Um, but then, you know, as a talent, you know, they just, she was fortunate to have a, a family that really believed in her. So what they did was, they, you know, started pouring into her. And as you know, the story, you know, the star surgeon, and she started doing, you know, she uh, going to the mall, doing stuff. And, you know, back then they had, you know, like street teams. So everything was kind of like ground roots type things. And street teams were people that basically went out and, you know, you see the rap vans, the vans wrapped with, uh, you know, like the, you know, you the artist stuff and they was hand out different promotions, T-shirts, all this good stuff, all that type of stuff. Um, and so the street teams was basically your marketing and promotions team that was out there on the ground for you. Now you can do everything here with Instagram and all social media and all those type of things. But back then they didn't have that. And so she would, you know, go to the mall and be performing. And she started off with, uh, you know, doing the songs and, you know, little, little crowd here and there. But then all of a sudden it just, it just took. And, you know, you have this uh, attractive young woman 
or a young girl, a young teenager at the time, and she was dressed like a schoolgirl. Now, you know how that reference is with schoolgirls and they're doing this and that. And so a lot of men um, tend to see that, you know, and young kids like to see that. And that's kind of like a fantasy type thing for many. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's just everybody likes what they like. But, you know, then she started to grow. So then here is the... After that, she did the video, and then boom! All you, all of a sudden, eleven million albums later, you have Britney burst in here. Now, at the beginning, it appears you know she was taking care of business, doing what she was doing, very wholesome. She had a, uh, she had a, uh, you know, squeaky clean, and we all remember that squeaky clean virgin uh, type, you know, hey, I'm innocent type of, you know. Um, image, but as you know, as you, you know, the different songs you break down, and then she started talking about I'm not that innocent, all that, and then she started dating, you know, Justin Timberlake and stuff, which was very hot at the time. They did mention at the time, um, they were, you know, it was right in the middle of the male pop, uh, explosion on the scene, so you know, in sync and all them Backstreet Boys, which had been before in sync, but. You know, all the groups, you know, it was the 90s and early 2000s. So you had a lot. It was just a beautiful time for music. So when they hear, they see this dominating uh, young lady come in here, um, captivating the minds of everyone, uh, man, woman, child, teens, all in between. Um, they start to say, wait a minute. And what they did, it was really, and, you know, as a, as a male myself, I know that there's a double standard with different things. And that was very evident. You know, some of the things that uh, we would get away with, they wouldn't. <coughs> Excuse me, they would, uh, I mean, they'll be scrutinized. Uh, women or females will be scrutinized for it. Uh, they were talking about her with some of, I think it was with Matt Lauer, he might have asked her, but he just started like going right in like, hey, you have this image of, you know, this innocent little girl, but you're out here with, with your basically her behind out or no he said with no clothes on half naked or whatever and she was like I wouldn't say half naked um but I you know I guess at that time everything was taboo and it just started to be a little bit you know more risque but now it's like whatever's on it whatever it is whatever goes it goes so I mean you know it's and they really did uh they kind of bullied her they did um always talking about her image and all this type of stuff it just it was just i was just like dang wow. that's crazy so then like any other person um that was painted a certain way that doesn't mean like they are that doesn't mean they are that way. Prime example. I'll give you two examples. You got Christina Aguilera and you have Pink. Pink came right out and said, hey, I, you know, basically did what I had to do. They show I proved myself to the label, sold this music, now I want control to do what I really want to do. And after that, she became her own person, um, similar to Christina Aguilera, they said, look, we ain't doing all that cookie cutter stuff. We did what we had to do to show y'all, hey, we can do that, and we out like a sprout. You know what I'm talking about? And so after that, they gave them creative control. And then they and then they really just show, they really got to show who they really are. Now, many times they don't ask to be uh role models per se. We usually give that title to people. And um you know, that's on us. So if something happens, then you say, well, we look up to you. Well, hey, we didn't ask to do that. So we're not, you know, we're not doing anything like that anyway. So, you know, it, like I said, it is what it is. Um, and sometimes people just, I don't know, they, that's just not them. They don't want, they don't ask to be role models. We make that. And so as, time you know went on and she got older of course making her own decisions you know the money's coming in and here is where the things start taking a turn and they start bringing in this term of conservatorship um and basically having somebody control her uh 
finances and her estate. Now she has a estimated sixty million dollar estate, however, um, but um, a sixty million dollar estate that's being managed. Now, when you have that much money rolling in and out, it tends to corrupt a family. Um, you know, corrupt families sometimes. In this case, it seems like the money was getting into it um, with her dad, Jamie, uh, under the guise of, hey, I love my daughter very much. I want to make sure that she's controlled and stuff like that. And then you start hearing the, you know, you, you start reading the case and, and stuff like that. And then um, what led up to basically Brittany saying look F y'all this is what I'm going to do so you know the infamous time when she cut her hair you know that was there um, just being defiant you know she started off and had a great uh, she started off and had a great relationship with the paparazzi and then all of a sudden now she's bashing it in with the uh, bashing their cars in with uh, you know her umbrella and stuff like that and she just started doing things that was rebellious uh, it is what it is I mean you know, you have this young lady that's been in the media. Obviously, it's going to take a toll on you at one point. Um, it starts off great and stuff, and then now it's just like too much. I mean, the amount of flashing, just from a health perspective, it's like you go get some type of epileptic seizures dealing with some of the flashes you can't see. That's why they're wearing sunglasses half the time. They, she was sitting in there in a restaurant trying to eat, and they are around her booth. Just flashing, flashing, flashing. I'm like, bruh, come on, man. Like, for real? But but the other thing was they was getting paid bread for those photos. So you know that they were in there doing what they had to do. Um, so you know they was going to be in there trying to take pictures at every moment. Her picking the spoon up. They want to get the mouth the saliva hanging off the mouth right and the food drop they want to have it perfectly dropped suspended in the air from between her chin and the and the plate and they want to get that perfect steel shot i mean really and so you know and then she she got with kevin Federline. she had a couple of children then she you know that didn't work out and she got with these other random people um Outside of Hollywood, uh, I guess there was some type of, they mentioned, they said something about he was uh, one of the dudes. I was like, what? I never knew about that. But one of the dudes was um, some type of, uh, I don't know, young tycoon or some type of rich dude, whatever. Uh, but, you know, she was hanging out with, you know, becoming a little socialite. You know, she was hanging out with uh, Paris Hilton and all that type of stuff and just... I guess in our eyes rebelling, but she was just growing up. I mean, people change and stuff and then it just gets on her nerves. Some people just get tired of it after a while. So it is what it is. I mean, what else can you, you know what I'm saying? What else can you say? There's nothing else. You, what, what are you supposed to do? And so when, when that happened and she started doing these different things and with the kids, the, the infamous thing where she's driving with the baby on the uh, lap. Now I know a lot of people used to do that. They do that back in the times, and you know, have the kids and stuff like that. But of course, it's not safe. But she explained to where she was scared and said that uh, I wanted to hurry up and get my baby out of there. So she did what she had to do: just grab the baby, boom, boom, and drove off. Which I can understand that. But you know, in this nanny state type uh, U.S. Sometimes it can get what they call the nanny state. You know, people just be in your business like, hey, what are you doing? But, you know, it just didn't look right. And, um, hey, it is what it is. But this is where the problems started coming. Then all of a sudden, now her dad has full control over her estate. And all of a sudden, this free Britney movement was... Um, birthed and uh, to the point where she even acknowledged it in one of the uh, depositions um, that you can see uh, online is public information it was up there in the uh, documentary because they pulled the public records of the court case and it was highlighted um, that she was basically giving a shout out to the Free Britney 
And one of the things was that there's actually a podcast that uh, deciphers Britney's um, Instagram. It's the two ladies. I forget the name of it, but you got to check it out. Um, if you go to the documentary, you can check it out to get their names. But they basically decipher her Instagram page. And now you can make something out of nothing. We all know that. But when you really start looking into something, you'll probably find something. So they saw her um, just sending all these cryptic type messages. And, you know, they was looking at her every becking move. Um, some of the stuff she puts up, like, you know, people will put up quotes and they do that all the time as they just subliminal and they just say stuff because it's like a cry for help. But they got to disguise it for the people that, you know, that they're under control of. So there's, you know, she was sending stuff, for instance, I don't know, free as a bird. Sometimes you got to keep pushing stuff like, you know, stuff like that. And I just thought that was like, wow. Um, she really has a cry for help, and they uh, and they assert. See, one thing that society does is they want to call people crazy right off the bat, but that's not always the case. She's not crazy. Sometimes she just has. Some people have a mental breakdown. They also mention postpartum depression. Um, all those type of things would come into there. Some and some people are just crazy, but aren't we all a little crazy? Aren't we all a little bipolar? That's like human nature. So aren't we all like that? I would think so. But you know, we all got a little something on we we up one day, down one day, but then there's people that have really have it severely. And uh so I don't want to take away nothing from that. That's a very serious thing. Depression and anxiety and things that people go through. Very, very serious things that to joke around with at all. So I understand. Although I'm saying, you know, hey, yeah, all, we all show symptoms of those things, but that's not to take away that there's people that really deal with that. And it's very serious. So I understand. Um, I work in an industry that deals with that, um, on a daily basis. So I understand that. So, um, but they quit to call people crazy when sometimes it's just people, hey, look, I've had enough. Oh, you just have a nervous breakdown. It's like, look, just get out of my face. I'm done. And that's, and that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But people just have to, you know, understand that. And so the Free Britney movement comes along and they are advocates with, you know, just wanting to see her free because here you are, they have the conservatorship. But then she's able to go out and perform. You know, she had her residency in Las Vegas. Uh, she had, you know, albums and stuff that came out. And you have Jamie, her father, who's uh, controlling all the money legally. And so in the documentary, they just had a recent, she was filing against to get her estate back. And so... The judge said she wasn't ruling anything at this time, so I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it a loss, but it's not a win either. It's kind of and it's one of the um, free Britney, free Britneyers mentioned, hey, you know, it's an open door that hey, maybe in the future they could do that. Now they allowed her to add a bank, which I think she was trying to get a bank to. Uh, add on to take over you know her uh, her estate as well so that way she can have more control but Jamie her father was still on there even though he said he wanted to take a step back but he's still in there controlling the money now it's been 12 years and I could just give up that 12 years of the good life now I understand it's the parents and stuff like that but if she's really truly surprised for help and stuff then hey something is going on and you know then her Instagram went dark because now it's like everybody as they mentioned in the documentary everybody has to relearn her relearn about her like now with this new social media you can learn a lot about people because it's more intimate you can actually reach out and talk and do all that type of stuff and so she was like dormant for a couple of months and then she popped up saying hey uh, sometimes people just have to take time for themselves or stuff and you know it's good you know they have pictures of her frolicking in the backyard and the swimming pool with her kids and stuff because she had lost custody of her kids 
and uh, because of her mental state at the time, so she wasn't even allowed to see them. Now that is, now that's serious thing for a mother not to be able to see her children. You have birthed, held, nurtured this child for nine months, and that you know, and then you're not able to see the child, not even like supervise. I mean. Come on, if you're afraid they're going to do something, at least to be supervised, they'll let her see the children. But, I mean, you know, we, we and we're only not outsiders looking in. We don't know. They did talk to her brother, and uh, at this, they mentioned, like, does she have reason to believe, like, you know, is she crying for help or something? And asked him about, does he see anything that is weird? And he jokingly was like, yeah, of course, all the time. He's like, no, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. So, you know, there's truth to every joke sometimes, but, you know, I don't know. You know, he's not going to say anything. Um, but you can tell that there's something going on um, with that. And so, you know, I just hope that she gets the help that she needs. I hope that she's able to be free and in control of her own finances if she's able to do that. I mean, why, why not? And she was saying she wouldn't perform anymore unless she can get her control of her money. So obviously the judge keeps on, excuse me, the judge keeps on um, allowing her to, uh, you know, allow her father to be the conservator. I guess her case is not strong enough for her to get her own control of the state um, of her estate or you know so it looks like they're taking a step in the right direction i mean at least the bank from what i understand was added on there the judge allowed that so maybe in the future that they can she can resolve her um father from being out there being on it and also they talk with some of the former lawyers now he one of the lawyers asked for a raise and then quit so some ain't right and they was talking to a former lawyer and, and he was kind of hitting around, hinting around, saying that, eh, asking a question, answering the question with a question, like a hypothetical type hint, hint type, like, well, if she's doing this and that, what would you think type answer? So it leaves a lot to be open. So, I mean, you know. It, it is what it is at this point. I mean, we can just, you know, hope and pray, send positive vibes out to Brittany to make sure that she's, hopefully, that she's getting the best care, taking that care of, and, you know, I hope the best for her. And I hope that she's able to get back out. I tell you one thing, she get there, her next album, you know, if, 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 it, if another album comes out, it's going to be very personal. It's going to be very good because she has a lot to talk about. I'm sure she's been writing and behind the scenes probably got all kinds of stuff from poems to, you know, haikus or whatever you want to call it, songs, everything. So I guarantee there's going to be something. Um, so, you know, it is what it is this time, but I'm not going to be before you long. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. This has been episode five where we just discussed real briefly the free Britney. You guys, let me know what you guys want to talk about. Um, I can even have some of you guys on. You just hit me up at info at his will official dot com and let me know what you guys want to do. Um, and uh, if you want to come on with this cop, what topics you want to discuss, we'll set up a time and try to get everything set up and have you on. And we can now give you the floor, ask you some questions. You can ask me some questions that we can discuss and just have a good time. Um, so, y'all, like I always say, it's peace and more hair grease. You dig? Ooh-wee. And I'm out like a sprout. No doubt. My healer, my provider, my comforter, you're all I need oh. For your love, Jesus died for you, paid the price for you, gave his life for you For your love, Jesus died for you